Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, toy builders around the world, introducing to you Mr. R2D2 from the Rise of Skywalker, Hassan Taj. Hello, good morning, Lee. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How's things, Hassan? All right. Yeah, good. How about you? Good man. Yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, not bad. Crazy times during this lockdown, but uh, we'll get through it. I think we're getting to the end of it now. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Um, so I've got a few questions that people have asked me to fire away and ask you, but we'll get to them a bit later on, I think. Okay. But all, um, just tell us about maybe what you're up to before you got involved in the film industry, mainly with your studies, really. What, what were you studying for and, and what, was your, what was your plan, if you had one, when you were younger? Um, uh, so uh, I, I finished school. Uh, got some of my, my GCSEs, uh, the ones that I needed to do my course. So then I went to college and did a level three B tech extended diploma. Uh, this was a two year course for me at college. Uh, the plan after was either going to uni or getting a job. So uh, I done so I done this uh, level three diploma extended diploma for me. That was. Uh, uh, if I had passed this course like I did, it then enabled me to go to university. And when I was at university, I was going to study sports science again, uh, but at a higher, higher level and try to get a degree. Cool. Good stuff. So that didn't quite pan out that way, did it, Hassan? Really? You, you did the college stuff. You did okay at college, though, didn't you? You did all right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I passed everything. It was just uh, uh, I wasn't too sure about getting a job. I mean, going to uni, I thought I'd... I'd because I, do, I, do, I don't like studying that much. I'd rather do something where I'm active more than actually sitting down and doing something like a desk job. Yeah. In some ways, no offence to anyone who has a desk job. <laughs> but you're, you're still doing your sport now, are you? You you keeping fit? Are you exercising still? Uh, yes, yeah, I do. Uh, I, yeah, about two, three times a week. I still try to play football and things. Right, good stuff. Excellent. Yeah. Obviously, what came up for you as well, which was a bit of a surprise for you, I think, um, was your involvement in the film industry. Yeah. You, how, how did that happen? You know, um, just, just give us an outline of, of, of how you stumbled across that job. All uh, right. Um, so I'm a part of a, a charity organisation called Dwarf Sports Association. Uh, it helps with dwarves like myself and other dwarves around the UK. And it's uh, where we get together, we, we do certain events, and we sometimes, well, most of the time, help spread the awareness of dwarfism. Uh, one of the main people from that, from that charity uh, is from the West Midlands. Her name's April Barrett. Uh, April did the, the, uh, a few of the original, I think she did the originals, uh, where she played uh, an Ewok. Yep. And... Uh, now, I can't remember, I think she was a robot and a droid in another movie as well. So she uh, also worked with Warwick as well when um, Warwick was filming because the, the, her and Warwick had met through this organisation as well and they'd been long friends. So this organisation needed people to represent them to go help raise money for the charity and to go help spread awareness. So I'd go with April and try and make them feel comfortable and uh, introduce them to Dwarf Sports Association to help them. Uh, at the same time, I'd go to schools with her to teach children about dwarfism and try to spread their awareness of it. And uh, tr I'd go to uh, events that would help raise charity money. So it would help the organisation and help her really. Um, April then, uh, in, in, in a, uh, she's an amazing woman. She um, uh, then gave me this uh, uh, Warwick Davis's contact and told me to contact him and asked if I was interested in any work. So I was interested. She then told Warwick and Warwick, uh, Warwick then messaged me the next day asking for my height and my age and everything. So I then did that and then he then gave me a day for the fitting. And then that's how uh, Star Wars came about really. Wow. Wow. So your first job was Star Wars? Uh, yes, yeah. Great. Amazing, yeah. Great. Yes, so, if I remember rightly, that was for Solo, wasn't it? Uh, yes, yeah. Okay, and obviously it was a creature's job because we called you in. So, you came in for a fitting, if I'm right. Yes, uh, yeah. 
introduce yourself for the first time and you know just get your measurements and get all the details we needed um do you want to tell us about your first trip to Pinewood Hassan um all right so and <laughs> what happened was so I thought it'd be you know a bit my first time ever going for a job interview as well and um uh so I, I just seen that they wanted me to dress well, obviously, for any job interview, yeah, someone will dress appropriately by going there smart. When it comes to creature industry and things like that and fittings, you don't really need to dress smart. You can go in trackies, it doesn't matter. So I thought I'd go in there smart, try to set the right impression and things. It's my first time ever going there. And my dad's quite a formal person as well. And he, likes, he always likes to keep things professional. So I thought, okay, cool. So I'd walk. Uh, some black trousers with some black shoes, um, a formally smart a, a, a shirt, and uh, a blazer on top. And uh, I walked in there. I met Sophie. Sophie is a, a really nice, brilliant woman who helped with the the black box, as, as I can remember it. That's yeah, that was it. that was the office. That's right. We used to yeah. refer to that as a black box because it was painted black. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sophie. Sophie was the performance book, and she used to book all the performers. Yeah, so um, she 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 then introduced me, uh, lovely welcomed me, everything. And so I went in a suit, obviously. And when they saw me, they looked a bit surprised, and uh, <laughs> they did <laughs> they didn't know what I was here. So then I told them, "Oh, I'm in here for fitting," and uh, they looked at me and said, "Oh, all right." And then they got me up, and then she asked me if I had anything else to change into, and I said, "I I just went like that." I'm like, and then uh, she started to laugh and then she said it's okay no worries and then she just measured me up yeah that's right uh, i think you then came over to the creatures department where the model making were where, where i was and i yeah. think i don't know if that was the same day but we tried you in a droid didn't we um i think that that was the next fitting i had okay. i think i think i met a few people and then that was it yeah. So yeah, it was mainly to get measurements, and when we're making droids, we always, you know, try and make it fit around the performer who we have an idea of who may be in the droid. You know, if it's a new build, especially. Um, and then as soon as the build starts, we always try and make it comfortable. As you know, we try and make it comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I remember you coming in. So the second time, you weren't suited and booted, were you? You came in a bit more appropriately with, um, dressed. Uh, yes. Yeah. You could say yeah. 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 <laughs> I am. Uh, I think. Uh, what did I, call? I came in the formal, uh, no normal standard clothes. I came in the pair of jeans and my trainers. And when I was there, I was then told quickly get dressed. So it, it was better than the first time round in a way. Yeah, indeed. So. And and then usually we give you what we call blacks, don't we? We give you like a a black leotard, so to speak. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A fairly, a fairly tight fitting light <laughs> um, top and shorts or trousers or whatever you feel comfortable in. And that's yes, yeah. to stop any baggy stuff catching on inside the droid, isn't it? And yeah. your comfort as well as, you know, making sure there's no problems inside the droid. Yes, yeah. So um, I think the first droid you tried for Solo was the yellow droid? I think the, f the first droid I was made for was the yellow droid because I remember doing that with Greg. That's right, yeah. And, and That's right. Uh, so I did that with Greg. At the same time, uh, you were working on with the <laughs> the disappointing one. <laughs> Hang on, Sam. You can't call my joys disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember that now. Yeah, you used to call it a disappointing <laughs> one. What was that? Which one was that? I think that was the black one on Mimban because I remember the first things I did do was on Mimban for my first ah, okay. work. Okay, I've got it. So we'll, we'll get back to that in a minute. We'll explain why it was disappointing. Um, the the three-legged one, the yellow one, yeah. um, so you did perform in that in the control room, didn't you? When it was, yes, yeah. So Greg, Greg is a model maker. He was part of our team. We had about four people at any one time in the model making department. And I know Greg, that was one of his early builds. And um, I think he fin did he finish that one or did someone else do that with him? Someone else do that? I think I'm not sure if I did say anybody that was with him that I saw out making him around it, it would be Jimmy. Oh, okay, yeah. So Jimmy Sandy's may have finished it as well. Yeah, 
we work together when we're building drawings so it's not always one person doing it it's you know there can be other people involved and of course you fabrication girls oh yeah brilliant, very brilliant. They, yeah. they help with the harnesses and so on don't they and yeah more comfortable for you which they usually do a great job at um and the the into interestingly the three-legged droid is actually called ht in four now why the in four i'm not sure but i named it ht after your to Santage. thank you very much that's really you dedicated to me so as as it was a first fitting for you and the first droid you were involved in i thought you know that would be quite quite a name so we managed to sneak your initials into the name of the droid which is cool i, I must tell everybody you know your character was, was impeccable it was amazing you you know you're always so polite and, and happy to do you know whatever was required of you and it was it's always a pleasure to work with you thank you uh, hopefully will continue to be but um you obviously because of of how well the the ht in four droid worked we got you involved in other droids for solo as well didn't we I think I did uh, all together. I think I did about three, 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 four droids on the baby right. on solo. There's, there's three I can remember, um, and one of my favourite droids from, from the whole film. Um, not something I was involved in, but Paul Shabesta. Yeah. And that's what we fondly referred to as TV bot, wasn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. It's a really cool droid. Uh, it's. Uh, Re really good as well because it was the first time I got to use different aspects of uh, me. Uh, I got to uh, do stunts with it. Uh, so uh, what th what they did was they put me in a, a green a, a green costume where I looked like a big bogey, but it's uh, called a, a, a green screen. And um, so I was I had to fully get dressed in some some green clothes. Uh, have I think I had uh, something covering my head. And then uh, the, the the droid itself is made up to my waist, so the the rest of the the rest that was shown of me that was green would just get covered. So the lid was actually up to my waist. That's how big the droid actually was made. So uh, yeah, Paul did a really good job in it. So I looked awesome. So when it came to shooting it, I had to jump on the control the control room desk. So. It was really cool as well. It was my first time doing stunts. I was I was slightly scared. I must admit, I was a bit scared <laughs> because it was the first time uh, everybody had the the full eyes and concentration on me. And when it comes to like everyone making a movie and Paul worked really hard on the trade, you, you want everything to go well and you don't want to disappoint anyone because everybody puts in so much hard work and effort. It's just but yeah, it's really good. Thankfully, it all played out well and everyone enjoyed it. So, so you were on a for that, for the stunt element of that, saying so you were on a wire, weren't you? Did they have a wire overhead that you were hooked up to? Uh, yes, yeah, they did, yeah. They gave me the wire as well, yeah. Yeah, so that was mainly for safety, wasn't it? Just in case you slipped or, you know, fell off the edge of the, the control panel. And they, they strengthened it, didn't they, with aluminium, I think? I think yes, yeah. Because the, the panels were quite strong anyway. but they Because yeah. you had to literally stamp on it, didn't you? They had lots <laughs> Squibs, fire, yeah. fire, sparking, and so on. Yes, yeah. And, and how many? I think you only took about three or four takes. Is that right? You, you did it really. Uh, I think we did it in two. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And that's I think that's the only time you wore that, wasn't it? You wore it for two takes, and yeah, yeah. It made the cut, and it's quite a good feature in the film, you know, for sure. Yeah, well, I, I know some really people great. that did like two hundred and fifty takes in some droids, and you see them for. Like half a second, so uh, you, you did well to get that on camera. That was good. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. That's my best shot, really. Yeah, it was, of course. Yeah, because you weren't in, involved with R2 at all by then, so uh, yeah, would be offended briefly by then. <laughs> we haven't got to R2 C2 yet. <laughs> um, so the other character you were involved in, well, was my disappointing droid, as you call it. Um, I, I didn't mean it like that. But no, yeah. I know. I'm going to explain just to just to get myself out of jail, Hassan. Don't you worry oh, about good. that. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> that was a, the mini gonk, wasn't it? We used to call it. Um, yes, yeah. The actual name of your one was, but uh, it was shot on Minban, and it was it was pretty basic. Let's face it. It was a square box, wasn't it, with a, a perspex lid, um, which had a lot of dressing inside, a lot of detailing inside, which was black in colour, a little bit yes. gonk droid. But I tried to cut slits in the cover so you could give 
to give you some visibility and anybody else that was in them because I made three in total. So I think it was you that came for fitting and I'll ask you about the visibility, <laughs> which you found disappointing. Oh, yeah. That's that is cool. You know, that's what we like. We need, we need honesty from the performers so we know how we can hopefully make adjustments to make it more comfortable and for you. Yeah, see at this time, I already knew that you was the master of making parades. You know, everyone was telling me how great you was, and then when I saw it, I was like, what? You know, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, that was the, I think that was the first parade that I ever did going. Uh, the, the mini yonk. Um, really, it, in a way, it's a good drill to practice off with anyway, for starting with, because like you said, oh. it's pretty basic. Uh, thankfully, I think, uh, uh, we had other Paul, Paul Casey, uh, who helped me with the, the the walking of it and the movements. So Paul was really good. Um, you, Fiona, everyone else, he pretty much did help me. And it's quite funny as well, due to the visibility of it, when because the first the, my first week of shooting was on my first two weeks of shooting was on uh, a scene called Mimban. Uh, Mimban was a it was a Awesome set. It's the first time I've ever been on set. It's really cool. But at the same time, it was really, really hard and challenging as well in some ways because of um, the ground not being level and everything else that was happening because it was basically a war zone. So, because uh, I couldn't see anything and it was, it, it was like a war zone, uh, there had to be other extras that were told about me and things. and. There's a lot of boxes because it's like a training, like a training camp, you could say, in some, some parts of it. So when it came to my first couple of shoots of it, uh, <laughs> Lee or Fiona or someone would be in my ear telling me where to go and just in case for my safety, make me aware if anybody was there or something was there so that I didn't bump into them or I, I didn't hurt myself or I didn't hurt them. So I remember my first couple of scenes of shooting on Mimban, I would be walking and they'd be boxes, but I wouldn't know where they were because of the visibility and everything and um, with the, all the ash and all the smoke and how, how Mimban was. So I'd walk and I'd walk into these boxes and I'd never know what they were. <laughs> so what you see on, on, the, on the screen was me walking, hearing into a box and taking three steps three four steps back because I, I i was mainly surprised that i'd walked into something and <laughs> all i could hear was lee or fiona somebody laughing in my ear saying oh you just walked into something and i was like yeah. oh, okay I'm, unfortunately we were laughing Hassan, but we were supposed to be telling you that the box is about to come your way stop or turn or something but uh yeah we got used to that in the end and, I'm, and i know you did because we always try and be on a on an earpiece don't we i think you were in all your droids i think Apart yes, yeah. From, apart from TV bot, which obviously, because your your body was out anyway, we could easily communicate. But yeah, we usually have a radio mic. And, you know, there's one or two people allocated to each performer on set, and uh, we're in your ear, like you say. And we're hopefully helping you out and keeping you entertained as well, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sure. best we can. But uh, yeah, that was a it was an impressive set. That was on the 007 stage, which and it was a massive. The whole stage, wasn't it? it was, yeah. Big war zone, but it was dark, it was smoky, yeah. it was muddy. Um, you know, there was there was fireworks flying around on fire for the explosions, and yeah. It was, it was such fun to be on, but um, after a few weeks, it got a bit tedious, didn't it? Eventually, yeah, it did, yeah. You know, it was it was good, you know. We we unfortunately didn't see that much of it, but uh, you know, it's still a, still good fun, still a good set, yeah. Amazing, that was. Cool. And um, of course, you um, also was in one f in Kessel as well, the mines, weren't you? Oh, yes, yeah, the mines, yeah, the mines. Yeah, that the was, quite was cool. landed when we were. Did you go inside as well? Did you do the interior or were you just exterior? I think I was just exterior. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we did the exterior shots at Pinewood on the back lot. Um, again, that was for a week or two, I think. Yeah. You were in one of the mini gonks then as well, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I was in. Yeah, in a way, yeah. But there was two. Two different ones, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so you were in a... On Mimban, you were in the grey one, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. On, on Kestel, you were in the blue one, weren't you? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, which is... I think it's called MPH-14. 
the I think, I, I think I think so. Yeah, something like that. And we yeah. had this gag. We had a gag, didn't we? Where you fell in one of the poles. Do you remember in one of the sulfur poles? Yes. Yeah. Which unfortunately we didn't get to. Did we actually even shoot it? I can't remember if we shot it. I think we did shoot it. And if, you, if there's a there's a scene where you don't really you see the droid walking beside it. And then there's a wide shot where it comes back out. And when it comes back out, you can see its legs kicking, but you have to be kind of zoom in. Okay. Okay, because we made, we made a gag for that, didn't we? You're saying they were, yeah. Well, I was quite keen to push you in the sofa pool, <laughs> but uh, they weren't having any of that. So we made yeah. an animatronic version, just the animatronic legs, didn't we? Yes, and, yeah. Uh, it was made by Chris Clark, who's a very talented mech in the creatures department. And he made these animatronic legs that would just, when the droid was upside down, they were just going to kick. Yeah. So obviously he was suffering. But uh, yeah, I think we did shoot that. But uh, sadly, I don't think you can see it very clearly in the film. But it was all good. Uh, yeah. It was all good. Yeah, it's, it's but do you remember it was raining? It rained a lot on that set. It was really sunny one minute. <laughs> Typical British weather. And next yeah. minute, umbrellas were coming out and just chucking it down. It was, yeah. it was difficult. It was hard work. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, it was good fun. It was good fun indeed. Good fun, yeah. um, after Solo, we were then shooting Rise of Skywalker. We went on to that one, didn't we? Yeah, that was the second media I ever did in my life. Yeah, Ryan yeah. Skywalker. Yeah, and the last thing you've worked on, if I'm right, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, last thing I've ever done. Yes, yeah. A bit like me, I've only worked on Star Wars. So have you? A bit late to the game, but uh, yeah. it's been great to have you on board. Yeah. Um, so for Rise of Skywalker, you were called in again for Creature Performer, and you were auditioned for one of the. Um, was it? Is it called? Let me just get this name right. Um, Wizich Moza. Yeah, Wizich Moza. Yes, yes. Okay. Which there were three of them. Is that correct? Uh, I think there's uh, there's there was me, there was RT, and Warwick was in one. I think. Did we not have enough small people, or or we we had we had a lot of droids called up in one go, where we were a bit thin on the ground? Because didn't you do a gonk droid as well briefly, which someone else was doing, but. They were in another costume, so we were we were like swapping performers around, weren't we, to be in different characters? I think from time to time. I think there there was uh, I think the only thing that happened, the only incident that happened was when Kieran, I think Kieran was doing a creature, and then the gunk was called up, and then I went into it, but nothing happened. They just called me back out of it. Okay. I think he took yeah yeah. So so with the name Wizich Moza, I think that is Warwick's one, isn't it? Because uh, I've got that name from the encyclopedia, and I think yeah, must be done. Yeah, we've got different shoes or something, and um, that's how we've identified that that's Warwick. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not sure if yours or Artie's character have got different names or not. I don't think they've appeared anywhere, have they? Is that? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I can remember it, it, Warwick's one was really cool because he got to have the gun. Uh, so that that pretty much made him like the mate out of like the the group of gang of us. It was like he was the main guy. And then uh, it was like me and Artie were just, you know, one of the boys just meddling about, really. Cool. And that's so, the yeah. character you played, wasn't it? You and Artie sort of had this skit going, didn't you, where you were both just created your own characters and were just up to mischief all the time. Is that right? Yeah, yes, yeah. So, um, <laughs> well, before Artie's a, a lovely creature performer. Um, she's always there for advice and helping out and things. So, and she's really, really organised, thankfully. So before we'd go into set, she'd, she'd say, listen, I've got a few ideas. So we'd, we'd stand there for five or ten minutes before, because it, it takes a while to get the set ready and things. And the stage five set was really cool as well. One of the uh, amazing sets, stage five. Uh, I can't remember the actual name of it. Black, was it Black Park, what was it called? Well, that was, so we shot, the exterior we shot at Black Park. Oh, okay. And the interior we shot on the Roger Moore stage, didn't we? The new, the new stage at Pine. Oh yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, uh, that was really cool, and uh, RT would always give me ideas and things. So we'd stand there for five, ten minutes, and like you said, our crew was just very mischief in a way and misbehaved most of the time. So it'd be parts where, if you look carefully, me and RT, we. I want to say fight with each other, but it wasn't actually physical. We just verbally fight with each other, and now and again, 
Yeah, now and again she might hit me, but it wouldn't be hard. It'd be like a soft one. <laughs> but um, yeah, other, other than that, though, just really cool, fun creatures to do. They have big, big eyes. But um, now and again, we refer them to bum flies because their eyes are really big and look like bum cheeks. So <laughs> it's quite cool. Um, we had an animatronic. Uh, can't remember who, boy. So what would happen is mine and Artie's creature could speak, and you could hear. Uh, little noises from us. Uh, Cl- I think it was Claire Bannister that helped made them. Uh, so Claire he helped make the the bomb the bomb fly head, and uh, then gave us animatronics. So me and Artie would we, we would speak, and yeah, it was like these creatures had their own different language as well that no one could understand except for each other. And the only one that could probably translate it would have been Warwick. Okay, and what you were saying about how big the eyes were, Hassan? Could you see though? Was what was the visibility like? Oh, cool. So the visibility was actually the mouth. Okay, right. So the mouthpiece would be here, and then the rest would just be so from here all the way around would probably be like the eyes <laughs> of the fly. And what sort of vision did you have? Um, very, very little, very little visibility in a way, but you could still see because it was like small strips. So there was about three or four of them, so you could still see. Okay. And we had some vision through the nostrils, because the, the, their nose were very small. So we had two holes we could see through as well. So when you think about it, really, we, we did have quite a bit to look out of. Right. Out of okay, that's good. And did you have someone in your ear as well? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Good stuff. That's great. Yeah. And then, thankfully, because you were at, I can't remember the actual day it happened and the scene we shot, but thankfully, as you were, at Pinewood, for that character that you've just spoken yeah. um, Suddenly, JJ asked for two-legged R2-D2. And yeah. um, I, we hadn't really planned for two-legged R2-D2. Admittedly, in The Last Jedi, we had the two-legged R2 on standby at all times. But this time, we weren't so sure you know, whether it was going to be needed or not. We hadn't done anything about it. Mm. We asked if you know, we could get two-legged R2 on set. So, yeah, that's, that's fine. I had the remote control version just as a backup, which I could just drop from side to side. But you were around, so we tried you inside R2-D2. Yeah. Thankfully, you, you just stepped in, and there you were. Before you knew it, happy accident, you were <laughs> R2-D2. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's cool. It's, uh, like, like you said, we, we've just about both made it. So, in a way, made it into the sequel and things. So, it's great to be part of it. And obviously, to have a... Cast role, you could say, or some people might say a main role. It's, uh, it's a privilege in a way, so it's really cool. And uh, yeah, like you said, yeah, we were just, just there at the right time, thankfully. So, yeah, yeah, it was a very lucky, very lucky. But uh, you know, and but you've 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 grabbed hold of it. You took the opportunity, and you know, I, th- I think you did a great job. Have what memories have you got, Hassan? What are your favourite scenes in R two? Maybe what you know? What's what's your memories of? Working inside R2, how was it? Uh, so the first time working was, um, so like you said, Lee had just called me and grabbed me quickly basically and said well, we need someone to go into him. And uh, I'm always happy to go and go into any robot, no matter what, or creature, and try to give my best for that person, try try and make it really good for the movie. And, you know, I'll, I'll give him my all, so hopefully... Like, so hopefully no one will be disappointed and I don't want to let, let you guys down. So I was told to do it. So the first time I saw RT, he's hanging off, because um, he gets, there's a scene where Lee puts him in the X-Wing. So uh, there's a part where he's connected to this thing that pulls him up and down. Uh, so him and Waldo uh, lifted that off. And it was a bit funny because there were some extras around as well. And they didn't know what was going on. I, obviously, I was just told, whatever I'm told, I just do. So I'd gone into it. Uh, Leah told me to do my movements, but it was a really good behind-the-scenes part because, in, in a way, everybody in the creature department or is like a bit bit of a weird family, in a way. But there's a part, that by, by where R2 was, there was a ten where all the creatures' performers were. So all my friends and everything were there. And... Lee and Waldo was like, give it a minute. So <laughs> I gave it a bit of a wiggle. And um, 
Yeah, everybody in the creature department had cheered for me and it was, it, it was a really nice moment because they all cheered and the, they all started clapping. So yeah, it was, it was, that, that was my first scene in him and probably my, well, not seeing best best part of being, first time being in him and best part about being in him. Yeah, yeah so I, that think, was really I think good. that probably, I think that probably made you realise how important and what a key role it was, I think, at that yeah. point. I'd, I'd forgotten about that, you know, and uh, yeah, you just talking about it now, saying I, I can't, I must confess I'm welling up a bit because I remember it well. And yeah, we're, we're just a big family, you know, yeah. we're, we're just such good friends, all of us, you know, and bizarrely, we all go off on our separate ways and then don't see each other for months, maybe years, but yeah, such a close knit community. We have to be, you know, and um, for that moment with you and R2 was just, was just it was quite a, quite a proud moment. It was good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that, that, so that that would have to be one of them. And like you said, it's it, in a way it did show me how much RTD to you meant to well people that I work with. So to the fans, it must be a lot more. So it kind of did set a bit of a standard for me to to you know to always uh, perform as best as I can in him and try, try to people what they want. At the same time, when it came to the RTD to role. I'm I'm not a naughty guy, but I do, I do cause a bit of mischief now and again, and I do have some laughs. So when I got this role, I then thought Lee was like, "Listen, you have to be a good lad now." So <laughs> <laughs> I became more of a good lad in a way. On set, um, my second my second one would have to be the layer part where I had to do the bend over. Um, that scene. <laughs> the funny story about this scene was usually before you do a scene or anything, uh, before everything, yeah, before you do a scene, he usually, he and I used to get a, a transcript. Uh, in this week, when it comes to transcripts, I never, well, I do try to bother, but I usually leave it to Lee because it's a, a big responsibility and if you leave it, you can get in trouble and things like that. So I think it's best not to have it. And I've always got these there. These always there for me to help me out. And like two RTD trees are rolled by two people, not one. So Lee's the other guy. <laughs> he does do everything. So when RT's called up, I know Lee already tells me what's going to happen and things. So this week, a few people who had the transcript knew that Leah was going to pass away. So... I remember walking in, I think it was a Friday morning, we did, we did that shot. So I'd walk in, everybody's like, oh yeah, it's a big scene. This start, are you ready? I didn't know what people were on about. I just said, yeah, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. Always ready, Hassan, always ready. Yeah, we're always ready. And um, I'd gone into the toilets and um, some people were talking about the scene. But I didn't know what was going on. And then I... Uh, I, I I was, I think I was told by Derek and Tom about what was happening. And then I was like, what? And I, I was really surprised and shocked. And then I'd gone in and then I told Lee. And he was like, yeah, I already knew that. <laughs> I, I just didn't want to panic you, Hassan. You know, I'd never know how you're going to react to these things. You yes, yeah, it. cool, admittedly, but I always try and play things down because I just think that makes it a lot more comfortable. Yes, yeah. You know, but unfortunately, everything else that was going around you maybe did get the adrenaline going a little bit too early for you, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did, yeah. So, and uh, so, yeah, I had my, my big C inside the RTD2, and there was, it was really emotional that scene. That shot was really, really emotional. You could feel the tension of it as well. Um, at the same time, Lee gives me ideas of things that I'm able or what he thinks I'm capable of doing as well. So, like I said, it's a, it's a partnership. So, Lee moves the head and then I do the bend over and the movement inside him. But yeah, that had to be my biggest scene because throughout the whole of the movie, that's RT's biggest scene. And at the same time, when you go back through the sequel, you see how he's grew up with Leia and Skywalker and how much they, they mean to each other and how much the fans were going to think about it. And during set, during while I was on set, like I said, you could feel the tension, you could see the emotions running, and uh, you did see a few people get teary when they yeah. passed away, sadly. Definitely, definitely. It was, it was quite a moment, Hassan. Just remind me, Hassan, and I'm, I'm not doing this just to try and, you know, big up myself. I can't remember. How did the leaning forward come about? How, 
How did that idea, where did that idea come from? I can't remember. Do you remember? I think it came from you. I'm being honest. I think it came from you. Uh, <laughs> Viewers, I obviously haven't pre-installed this in a sand mind, you know. It's, I, yeah. I'm not sure. I, I don't know if it was JJ or whether it was you or me. I don't know. But again, it just I, that we're a team. You know, it's just... Yeah. Just want you're just as one, really, aren't you? So, uh, yeah, it, it's whatever we could really do to bring the best out of our team selves and like try, try and make the media the best we possibly can. Yeah, um, so, so how did you do that, Lean Hassan? How did you achieve that? Uh, so, the lean, I think the lean, yeah, it was when me, me, you, and JJ were there talking, and you said, Well, we could try a lean or something, and then I did the lean, so um. Yeah. Um, How did you actually physically manage to do that? How? What's involved in you doing that lean? I don't know. Sometimes I just, I just I'm just able to do things that I think, yeah, why not do it? But um, what I, what I do remember is with Arty, when it comes to doing the lean, you have to balance him properly because it's it's only my legs that I've got in him. So as I'm on my tiptoes, I kind of yeah yeah I lift him up, but I have to keep myself. Like my core really yeah. in tight and everything, so the droid itself, like RT, is leaning. Yeah, gotcha. and uh, making sure he doesn't fall over or anything happens. Gotcha. And Hassan, can you can you describe can you describe what it's like to be inside R2? What what how your senses? You know, what sort of senses have you got around you, and how dark is it, and how warm is it? You know, can you? So before, so how I get into R2 is he picks me up and then drops me in him. So <laughs> I'm going to drop me to R2. My legs are split like that. So I've got one leg this way and another leg that way. It's not straight. Um, that's a bit uncomfortable because it's a, it's a little uncomfortable because of uh, the middle part and everything with the, the, the private area and everything. So it's, it can get hurt a bit, but it's okay really, the legs, it's just after a while, the legs being like that for after a while can hurt a bit, but other than that, it's okay. It's really, it can get really hot inside him, depending on the set. For example, when we were in Jordan, I was sweating my head off. That was really hot. Uh, at the same time, it's quite funny because there'll be moments I can't see anything inside him, and there'll be moments and parts where Lee will move the droid and the head will spin like that. So it'll be, quite, it'll be pretty funny because I don't know what's going on. But all you see is the, the dog doing that and I'm thinking, oh, but it will just be Lee moving it. And then uh, I've always got Lee in my ear as well. So if there's anything going on, he's like, oh, take a rest. You can rest for a bit. So I'll try and make yourself as comfortable as possible. Or there will be moments where he asks if I need anything or how I'm feeling in there. But it can get really hot. It's not really uncomfortable. It's got really bright lights inside of him because of uh, the eye and everything else. So the light's always on. Um, but yes, yeah, to be honest with you, with, as well with doing this droid, because you know how R2 is a main droid and everything. And because I've been in three or four droids in my in the previous solo one, when I stepped into R2, you do feel like a, a boss droid. <laughs> you're, a, you're a big man droid. But um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool to be honest. And I remember as well, there's a, there's a call name for R2 being the little guy. So whenever I'd get a call sheet, it'd say the little guy, but I didn't know this the first time I, I'd done it for the second shot. So when I was called in for R2 and he's saying the little guy, I thought these are taking the mic at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd gone up to Derek and I said, Derek, this is, what's this about? Derek said, oh, no, you fool. It means R2. So it was quite <laughs> funny. And uh, I was like, oh, all right, cool. <laughs> and so um, Hassan, Hassan, you've got a keenness for um, a certain chocolate bars, well, haven't you? Do you want to tell us about that? Um, I love Freddos. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, well, I, I think it was on the end of uh, Solo where uh, Fiona, who's lovely, the 
sorry guys, the best. But always have us with uh, giving me uh, chocolates and things. She made a little pouch and she did the same for Artie. So she made a pouch inside him. And uh, I've always got about three or four Freddos in there. And throughout the day, I just eat Freddos, you know, because you do get really tired in lifting the trays and everything. So I know there's always a Freddo there for me. So when I get hungry and I'm in the tray, he start talking. I just have a, just have a Freddo. That's right. And uh, just just to rewind a little bit on what's it like to be an R2, of course, in between takes, I always try and step in and take the dome off as well, don't I, to give you some fresh air. Yeah. Well, so, and just to, it's sometimes easier um, to communicate with you rather than just the earpiece. Um, because yeah, yeah. the earpiece is, of course, the earpiece is one way as well. You can't talk back to me. Can you? <laughs> no. So we have a little signal thing going on, don't we? So if, before a yeah. take, if I'm out of shot and I can't step in to talk to you, I'll be on the radio and say, everything okay, Sam? And you'll give me a little shake from R2. I'll know that everything's okay. And we, you know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's quite a neat way of communicating. Yeah, at the same time, um, Anthony as well, because um, sometimes forgets that no one's inside RT. So there'll be times where I'm trying to leave and Anthony would have his, his hand on me or something because <laughs> he likes it being there and it's easier for him to, you know, get into his costume as well because he does struggle as well. And yeah, so it'd be a bit funny. And <laughs> now and again, he accidentally. Uh, chip a few things off RT and not, you're not realising what he's done because he can't see himself. So, um, yeah, that'll be funny. And he would be like, oh, Anthony, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be quite funny. It'd be amazing. We mentioned Anthony, um, Sam. What's it like to to work with Anthony Daniels? You know, to someone that's been in the industry for so long, working on Star Wars as C-3PO, you know, film the films. What's it like to work with him? And Anthony was uh, the first time I ever met him. He was, he was really funny. He was polite, really friendly and welcoming. He gave me a lot of confidence as well, uh, because he'd always reassured me that I'd done well. He always gave positive feedback. Uh, like I said, he's a very professional person, and when it comes to doing an a role, an act or a scene with C three PO or not D two. He's he he already knows what what he wants, and at the same time, because these two are do our things, he always he always gives advice to how we can do certain roles and how we make his life easier and how we can make our life easier while shooting. And yeah, it's just been a, a big confidence piece because of his lovely words and things, and he he always tries to help and support us. And uh, it's really nice. Yeah. It's really funny as well. He's, he's an amazing person. Yeah, it's <laughs> really funny to work with. And uh, yeah, he's just a great guy. Great. That's great. And Sam, you mentioned briefly about Jordan, that we went to Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Just so people know, you know, the, the Jordan shoot was massive and the, the infrastructure that went out there. I helped pack everything, you know, in the containers. And I can't remember how many containers the creatures department shipped. It was two or three. And that was just the creatures department, you know, and we were, qu we were quite compact compared to vehicles and costume and everything else. You know? Yeah. And it, was just, it was just vast. You have to ship the stuff or two before we shoot as well. So it has time to travel there and unpack and so on. And um, we were there for, I think they were filming for two or three weeks in all. And yeah. we weren't going. Well, two, we were left out. We were just, you know, the whole of creatures department went over to, to Jordan and um, I can't deny, you know, I, I did feel a bit left out, but I, we were surplus requirements. We were not needed. R2-D2 was not going out there. Um, none of my droids were going out there. So we had some time off. But then within a week of filming starting and us being at home having our two-week sabbatical or however long it was, yeah. we got a phone call, didn't we? Yeah. And, uh, hey, guys, how soon can you get out to Jordan? So a, a slight change of plans, <laughs> slight change of scripts, whatever it was. And next thing I know, I'm rushing down to Prime Studios, packing R2-D2 away and um, making sure our passports are up to date. Yeah. What an experience, Hassan. We, were, we, went out, we went out together, didn't we? I think we met Kelly at yeah. the airport. She was flying as well from the UK on the same flight. Um, she was rushed out there as well, I believe, for the same scene. Um, how did you find yeah. What did you think? 
it was great. <laughs> Jordan was amazing. Um, uh, the, the itself, it was. Uh, oh, it's my first time ever doing locations. Um, <laughs> like like he said, everybody had been there for two three weeks, and you know, after being at a certain place for a long time, you do start to miss your family and your friends, and uh, can get a bit frustrating. And bearing in mind, as well as we're all having fun and we are in a different country, we have to still work. So you have to behave and um, children as well, you're not used to the heat, it's a different country. Um, <laughs> some of the people there before me and Lee were waking up at half two and then going to the set at like six and then but when me and you got there, we were the lucky ones. <laughs> and Hassan, what about when we arrived? Because we, we arrived in a different airport which was further away from the from the airport the rest of the crew flew into. I think we had a, a four or five hour road trip, didn't we, to get to the location. Yeah. Um, and the hotel that we turned up at. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, the, there'd been a bit of a mismatch between the hotels. Um, so me and, uh, bearing in mind, I'm scared of snakes. So on the way there, I'm just asking the taxi driver about snakes and he's dead making jokes about snakes. And we're, uh, we, we weren't sure if we were going to go straight to set. And me and you weren't told if we were going to go straight to set or not. So we're there in our summer clothes thinking, oh, it's a nice hot country. Um, so we, we go to the hotel we're staying at, which is a beautiful hotel called Almanara. Um, so me and the, we're thinking, yeah, we've got a chill day off today. We'll just relax, you know, check a few things out. He had already got a few things in mind of what he wanted to do at the hotel. So we were, we were sitting there and then we, we see Patrick. Uh, Patrick is another puppeteer and creature performer. Uh, so they were really, all these lot were really pleased to see us all our creature department because they've been there for a while and seeing some new fresh faces can, can make, spark you up again and bring everything back to life. So he's there, he's having a conversation with Patrick, he's saying hello and everything. And then Patrick asked him, oh, so where are you staying? And he said really happily and chuffed, we're staying here. <laughs> it was the nicest hotel, it was beautiful, so nice. Yeah, so cool. And then you, you, and Patrick's like, oh, you guys are lucky then. You like it here. And then two minutes later, we got a call, and uh, the guy from the main, uh, the, the main office of the hotel came up to us and said, "Sorry, you're not staying here. <laughs> yeah, you're oh, in hotel. the wrong hotel." <laughs> <laughs> we and we did literally uh, go from the top hotel so, to the bottom hotel, didn't we? In, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny, but it, it was cool because we preferred to be with our friends who were staying there anyway. That's so, right, and it was fine. It was yeah. okay, wasn't it? You know, we were lucky. I mean, there was a, you know, you have to be careful what you eat and so on out there. But it, it was cool. It all turned out all right. Yeah, fantastic to be honest with you. Sadly, what we shot wasn't actually seen in the film. No, yeah. It was. A, it was a bit weird. I think you know, it was the whole Romanian cast that survived the film. In a, in a line looking at the sunset, wasn't it? And um, yeah. middle of the desert. And when we were shooting it, and I think we were in size order as well, which, which yeah. you know, with, with BB-8 and Dio on the end. And um, yeah, it, it was never seen, but it was, it was cool to be involved. We helped out with other things as well while we were out there. Yeah. And what a wonderful experience. It was, it was cool. Uh, that has to be probably one of my best, uh, but best experiences of uh, that, that, that whole sequel as well because my first time doing locations and um, yeah it's just pretty amazing at the same time i've never been on a holidays with these lots so these lot tell me about all the crazy stories and things they get up to and then when i was finally there i got two in the seal um, <laughs> so I, we'll, we'll, we'll stop we'll end that there hassan we'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now just to finish yeah. off hassan um you mentioned a few people your your um you mentioned a few people, crew members, that you're fond of, you know, and I know we all get on and you're fond of all of them, but that's yeah. the people you mentioned. And uh, one of them being Fiona Pollard. Oh. So I've actually got something for you as a little surprise. Oh, I'm okay. Gonna share my screen. Surprise! Hi, Hassan. I hope you're well. 
Now we had the opportunity to work together on many sets and you were a dream to work with, but I want to know which set was your favourite? Oh, that's a hard question. I'm not sure really, because we've got the Black Park, we've got Bimban, and then we've got the one where, actually the control room was quite cool as well, and the bar one was quite cool as well. <laughs> so many cool sets, you see, you're saying? That's what Fiona says. We've worked on so many cool sets, but which is your favourite? I'll say, I, I, I'm going to go with Mimban, because that, that, that story does make you think, gosh, yeah, I'm going to go with Mimban. And that's where <laughs> me and Fiona first went with, yeah, Mimban is, yeah, Mimban. Love it. Okay, that's great. Mimban. That's great. Okay, so I'm going to try and play another video now, another question, okay? Okay. So here we go again. Well, well, well. Well, 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 here we, there's, whoa. I've just noticed there's a lot of yellow in this. I mean, that looks like I'm wearing a hat if I do that. That's, anyway, anyway, didn't think you'd see this pretty face, eh, buddy? Eh? Hey, hey, H man, how you doing? How's my number four guy, huh? Yeah, that's right, you're my number four guy, okay? It's a good place to be. I'll give you a countdown of my peeps, all right? Number one is me. I'm always number one. Remember that. In any scenario, numero uno. My number two is my wife. Three is my son. Sometimes that changes. Number four is a tie right now, and it's a tie between your handsome self and Tom Wilton. Now, I propose a battle royale to the death, okay? But look, that's a whole other conversation we can have another time, and, and you know, we'll deal with that later. Right now, I'm here to help this interview, okay? I'm going to ask you a question. It's a two-part question. You have to answer. Can't give no cop-out answer. You have to answer these questions, okay? Part one of my two-part question is... If you had to choose two new colors for R2-D2, what would they be? Number two, part two, dose. If you had to rename R2-D2, what would you rename R2-D2? And you got to answer that. And remember, your answers will probably make half the people watching this hate you. So that's what I'm doing for you, buddy. That's the love. I got your back. I got I got your back, buddy. Much love. I miss you. Miss you. Mm. All right. He's a nutcase. He's trying to get me killed. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your answer, Sam? Well, gosh, number one's a bit of a hard one. If I had to choose a different colour for Artie. Oh. I think he looks pretty good the way he is. Um, if I had to, I'd probably pick... Green and black, but like a glossy green and a jet black. Wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting that, Hassan, but I like it. Okay. Yeah. I thought you might say red and white for your team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great idea. No, you've had your chance. You've had your chance. Oh, right. What would you call it, Hassan? What's question number two? What would I call it? I don't know, really, really, it's, it's, it's a, it's a droid, but it's, in a way, it's not really our droid, is it? It's the people's and the Kenny's and everyone who did it first. Yeah, but, you know, if, if, let's say then that if you, if you had a same droid as R2-D2, but it was painted green and black, what would you call it? What, what letters would you give it, let's say, you know, like C2-B5 or whatever, you know, what, what, what designation? We call it. What designation would you give it? I want to name it after me, but if I do so, Derek might get a bit offended. Don't worry about him. Okay, if I do, oh, he sticks you up with this question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I give it. I give it four, four, five, six. How many letters can it be? Can it be how many ever letters it wants? Preferably four, really. Ah, uh, four crap. Right, right, come on. So I, I'll have one letter for you, one letter for Fiona, one letter for Derek, and yeah, one. See, if I say this last one now, everybody's gonna be on my case saying you didn't choose my letter. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to give it to Paul. 
So yeah, P. Now Sean's gonna get angry, but yeah, I was gonna say Paul. Yeah, four letters Paul. So hey, hey, uh, L F D P. <laughs> That's what I have to call him. Okay, so Derek's gonna love that. Good answer. Oh gosh, I think I might just save myself, kill myself at the same time. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so we've got one more video to play. Hey Hassan, Tom Wilton here, uh, one of your fellow creature performers. I don't know if you remember me. Uh, it's just obviously now that you've become famous, you know, being R2D2 and all, you're not getting back to my texts or, or my emails. But despite that, you'll always be my number three. I would never make you wrestle to be my number three. Uh, how you doing, mate? Hope all, hope all is well with you. I'm babbling words. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, despite that, I'm going to carry on. Um, here's my question for you. We've had some good, fun, practical jokes behind the scenes on Star Wars. What is your best practical joke that either you did on someone else or someone else did to you? Go. <laughs> Right, um, gosh, that's quite a hard one. Because there's been quite a couple played on me as well as me playing on others. Right, so me and Mikey, who is a costume designer, um, basically we got Derek on and back, and how we did that was, uh, Derek played a lot of pranks on me this week, so I planned this one for a couple of days. So Derek played, um, uh, I can't remember what his character was. It was um, the guys in the yellow suit. Uh, when he had a yellow costume, and he had that that it was like a a bear, and so it was really big. And obviously, me being my size and everything, so I'm probably about well, up just over Derek's leg. But when it comes to making the costume with the padding and everything, his leg's pretty much bigger than me, so. <laughs> what happened was, uh, there was one morning, I came in around about half seven, I quickly ate my breakfast, I ran in and I told Mighty what we were doing, Mighty loved it, and she was like, it's a great plan, I think you should do it, because Derek's quite well known for his jokes and everything as well, so I had jumped into Derek's costume, <laughs> and my whole body pretty much fit in his one leg, so I was there with uh, this bruised in one leg of him, and my head would pop out from halfway in doing the sip. So Derek was there. So I'm, the, I'm I was waiting about half an hour, an hour. And we were needed on set for for nine o'clock. So I was in there for over an hour. Derek came around about eight fifty, and Mighty was quickly rushing him, telling him, "Get in your costume, come on, get in your costume. We need you on set." And Derek now and again, once he told him about three, four times, he does get a bit impatient, and he was like. Guys, it's, it's flipping quarter past eight. I've got to be on set for nine. I've got plenty of time. And these like, were just still rushing him up at the time. A few of the costumes, new girls I already known. So as he was there, he's <laughs> bearing in mind, he's really annoyed. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he just lift up his costume. He could feel it was a bit heavy, but luckily he, he managed to, I don't know how, somehow, he pulled it out without, without realising it would still be heavy with me in it. And uh, and then he zipped it up and then as I was there, I screamed out and shouted, boo! And I scared the crap out of him and he really scared him. He's like, he's silent for a minute because he didn't know what the hell had just happened. And he's like, <laughs> that's bloody why. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, probably the best prank of pulled on anyone. Always a joker. Uh, Good fun to have around us then. Yeah, well... Slowly. I think we're going to have to wrap it up now. We've uh, gone well over our time. I'm going to have to edit this video and, and <laughs> pack it down to, to the 45 minutes I promised everybody. But uh, thank you so much for your time, Hassan. Um, really appreciate it. And I've just got to say, you know, hopefully we'll work to you know, your credit to the business. And um, thanks for all that you've done. You know, it's been, it's been so good working with you. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be very soon, Hassan. Yeah, hopefully, thankfully, it's been uh, been amazing working with everyone as well. It's like it's an experience that I'll always remember, and uh, 
you guys have been great as well. So I'm, I'm pleased as long as you guys are pleased, then that's all I ask for, <laughs> really. Right. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad I could help and give my support and offer. Good man. No, pleasure to work with. All the best to Sam and uh, Andy. Catch you soon. See, see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.